So, um, leveraging Tableau for first warning technology. Um, so what does this mean exactly? So, uh, long story short, a couple of years ago, uh, Stephen Huntsman, the first presenter, had a business requirement that needed to be met. So Prince was showing you uh, the, with the two standard deviations, those plots of all the different status codes that we received from the machine. The problem was, there's so many of them that we don't, like you were saying, we don't really know where to look. We can be reactive. We know if we're getting a lot of calls from this or that bank. We have to go look at that data and figure out what's going wrong. But how do we know what's going wrong before they call us, was the question. Um, so these, these are actually screenshots and quotes from the original uh, business requirement sheet. Um, he, you know, he circled these spikes and he said, we need to know where these spikes are. And obviously there's some statistics behind that. And I'm not gonna delve so much into the mathematics of how we solve this problem. Uh, but you know, if there's extra time and if you have questions about it, of course we can do that. So being, we needed to quickly detect when these problems were happening. So individual machines are passing these status codes through our SSDG system, um, and we're trying to find these statistically significant events. Uh, so for example, let's say we push out an update to Windows. Uh, all of the ATMs are, are Windows machines. So let's say we upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10, which is actually something we're doing right now. Um, and that causes a particular part, a particular kind of machine to go haywire. This is a very common occurrence, and you know, software updates are not the only reason. There's a, you know, hundreds of thousands of different root causes of the problems that cascade across our fleet. Um, so here's a screenshot of the actual table of all of these SSD tickets coming in. The reason I put this here is to show you that basically to human eyes it's nonsense. We have a, t a time, there's a timestamp, right? We've got a country, uh, the asset ID, meaning the machine, the particular ATM that we're talking about, uh, and the status code, the thing that went wrong. So there's some examples here. Um, SDM, scalable deposit module, core jam, deposit module being where you put in the cash in the checks. Jam, okay. Um, ATM has been vandalized. Uh, dispenser cassette, part that dispenses cash, not operational, right? So it's a lot of uh, description of what re went wrong, but no one has time. There were 2.3 million of them so far this year. We're not gonna hire enough people to look at all of these uh, themselves. So we need some system to drive where to look. Um, and so this is the same workbook that you were looking at before. We've got these signals, and we can detect spikes you know, by looking at the standard deviations but how do we know which ones are, are relevant to the business? How do, how do we actually make progress on fixing these problems by looking at these? Um, so which ones should we care about? How do we quantify the fact that we care about them? And how do we leverage Tableau to do this? That's basically the question. So we struggled with how to actually solve this problem for a really long time. We didn't know what we really wanted to do. We know we needed a place to look, but we didn't have any you know, numerical justification as to why or when. Um, so the thought process behind how we solve this is that if you, you know, a thought experiment, if I guarantee to all of you that the population of the world, for example, today, it would never change, and no one would ever be born or die Right? The, the population of the world would stagnate for the rest of time. Would you ever need to analyze that? Would there be any reason to ever, after today, look at the population of the world if I guarantee you it never changes? No, of course not, right? The only reason analysis and data science is important is because things change. So what we did was we formalized a method to detect significant changes in these values. And the way we did this uh, was via a statistical Chart. And if you happen to be at um, last month's ATUG meeting, uh, there was a really great presentation about Bollinger Bands, which are used more in finance. Um, it's a method of taking a signal that you have and defining upper and lower control limits on that. So if it goes above or below this value, that's how we know that we care about it. Um, and it's based on the mean and variance of the data that you're reading in. But uh, the idea is that you want to respond to outliers, right? Um, so the specific method that we used here is an exponentially weighted moving average, slightly different from Bollinger bands, but the core premise 
is that recent data is weighted much more heavily than past data. Uh, a multiplicative factor is, is applied to today's data and that that contributes to tomorrow's data with a discount. Basically saying as more time passes, the value from that day is less relevant. Um, so this is um, just an example of what that might look like. Uh, so if the red is the true data observed on each day, uh, the green line would be that exponentially weighted moving out. Basically, it's a, it's a filter. So it trails the data, it trails the trend of the data, but do it doesn't match it exactly. It lies somewhere in the middle, um, and it responds to changes slowly. So if there was a significant increase or something, it could drive that mean up. Or if there was a decrease, it could drive it down. But it would take a little bit of time to do to soften the filter. Uh, and then, based on the statistics of what you're observing, you can define you know, with two or three standard deviations, however you want to look at it, an upper and lower value saying, you know, if we observe too many high values over the last few days and all that data is weighted strongly, it will drive this green line above the upper blue line. And we can say, oh, something is out of control. This process that we're observing uh, is generating higher values than it used to. Um, so that, that was the fundamental logic. We needed to know when things change. So before I get to what that actually looks like in Tableau, um, I thought it would be useful to describe the entire uh, technology stack from the machines in the field to the visualization in Tableau of how we accomplish this. So uh, that simple slide prints is showing that oversimplified what SSDG is. That's actually sort of missing from here. It belongs somewhere in the first part. Um, so there's, there's these raw event data coming in from a machine. So that's things like core jam or, you know, the vandalize, something like that. And they go into that SSDG system, which then feeds into our distributed database. So we were talking about Teradata Aster. We actually use Teradata Aster on our back end to store this very large amount of data. Um, but if you're not familiar with Aster, which it's a proprietary solution, a similar software solution is Hadoop. You've heard of Apache Hadoop. Um, it's basically a means of storing huge amounts of data in a distributed fashion and then using the parallelness of those machines that store them to make computations um, very quickly around that huge amount of data. So we have this distributed system where all of these tickets lie, all of these single, you know, this machine said this thing came. So via this system, we aggregate all these tickets by customer and by machine type. Um, so we've got all different models of ATMs out there all different uh, things that we either create or some we even don't create. So some machines um, are not built in-house, but we do service them. So we partition this data by machine, by status code, type of error. So we want to know for all of the self-serve 80 ATMs for customer X, how many times today was there a dispenser fault? And that's what this, uh, this uh, middle section of of this visualization is showing. I built this myself. Uh, I wrote custom code that runs in a distributed fashion to make these calculations. And then the output from this system goes into Tableau, uh, where we can then do some fancy stuff we'll show you to uh, find what we're actually looking for, which is recent changes in that data. So. So what are we actually looking at? Um, so I hope this is not too small. Um, I didn't really think about the fact that you'd be sitting 10 feet back to the screen. Um, but there's the black dots on these plots are the raw data. So you'll see on the left side, status code. These are the different fault types that we have. So uh, something like a skimming device is confirmed via video, local law enforcement on site waiting for the hardware servicer. And so it's a pretty complex one, pretty interesting. Um, but this is for a particular customer uh, and particular machine type. The black dots are the daily frequency of that event over the week. So for example, for this customer, on June 1st, 2017, there were three skimming devices on this machine type, long story short. Um, and there's all different kinds of crazy things like this. I wrote down one that I wanted to show specifically. You could probably 
probably put it in presentation mode and get a couple more. Oh yeah, real yeah. estate. Sure. I'm gonna have to pull it out of presentation mode in a minute to because we're gonna do a level of detailed calculation if you're familiar with that. Um, but so you can see there are other events which with much higher frequency, right? Um, so there, there's a lot of variation in um, the actual counts of these events, right? So here, ATM reversing transactions, um, you know, there were 34 on this particular day. Um, some of these go into the hundreds and thousands daily, depending on you know, just the context of what's going on. So what are we really trying to do? We're trying to figure out uh, when there's a significant, significant increase. Oh, is there a question? Which, yep. which line is your uh, weighted out, your moving average? Uh, so, right, I should clarify that. The blue is the moving average, um, and then we did some magic, so there's these upper and lower red and green control limits. So oh. analogous to the picture I was showing you before, that if the blue goes above or below the red and green, that's a problem, meaning that there was a significant increase or decrease in what we're seeing. So in this particular case, right, uh, starting around December 5th, there was a significant increase. It's, it's visually clear that that is the case, right? But we needed to do that mathematically. Um, so uh, again, I'm not going into the math of this, but blue line goes above red line. Easy condition to find, right? So that's what this purple here is indicating. The purple is just up when the upper control limit is violated and down when it's not. Um, yeah? And I was Yes, yeah, so there's a sliding window. Um, I can, you know, when we're all talking out there, I can describe it more in depth. Um, but yeah, there's a sliding window of historical data. The problem here is we didn't know how many ATM reversals we want per day. It's not, it doesn't make any sense to talk about it that way, right? How many hardware defaults should we have today? It's not a reasonable question to answer. Um, so we had to do some justification for using historical data to set those bounds. Um, so that's why the bounds actually move, which traditionally they would not. Um, so, all right, it's clear that we have a blue line above a red line, right? But this happened on November 30th, 2017. It's not very useful for us. We need to know if this problem is happening today, right? So, um, I'm gonna pull it out of presentation mode. So if, raise your hand if, you're, if you've ever written a tableau level of detail calculation before. Okay, great, that's way more than I expected actually. <laughs> um, all right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a fixed level of detail calculation. Uh, fixed customer, fixed product type, um, and fixed status code. And we're gonna calculate the max date that there was an upper control limit violation. Makes sense, right? We wanna know the most recent ones. So if we know the last time this particular signal went out of control, we can sort by that last time and put the recent ones at the top. So, create a calculated field. I'll call it um, last violation, something like that. Fixed. Okay, so what's fixed? Customer number. Uh, I would make the font bigger. I'm just going to talk through it. Um, I hope you can follow. Product family name, that's the product type I was referring to. Status code, so that's our hardware fault. So now we've aggregated basically along these graphs. We're saying for one of these graphs. Uh, okay, and what are we trying to calculate? We're trying to calculate the max. Okay, so we know the signal's out of control if the moving average went above the upper control limit, right? So if the exponentially weighted moving average is greater than the upper control limit, then we'll take the date. And that's uh, called window end date here. But if not, right, so what do we do with the value when it's not out of control? We don't want to consider any date when the signal is in control and the blue is in between the red and green. So, uh, for the purposes of just building this workbook um, else, and we'll just use January 1st, 1900, just a, a really early date, um, so that we know, you know we haven't been collecting data since then. 
right? So we try. If there was we try. never a problem. Um, <laughs> so if there was never a problem and, and that upper control limit was not violated ever, uh, it'll say 1900 was the last time that there was a problem. So kind of a hack, but that's okay. Hacks get it done. All right. That's it. So, what are we going to do with this last violation date? Um, just give it one second. It's a lot of data in here. It's on an extract, but still. Okay, so, I'm going to bring this so that it's up on this left side here. I'm going to have to change it to the day. So, I want to know the day. And it's going to make it continuous, so I'm going to have to change it back to discrete. Um, so I don't know if you all are familiar with how Tableau handles discrete values versus continuous values, um, but I want this to be a, a basically a dimension for this plot, not a, you know, a line that's plotted at that date. So um, discrete. And I'm also going to have to move it back. Okay. So. Now what we have, let me find a good example. So if we're looking at this uh, document feed device state not operational. This blue line is kind of hard to see on this particular one. I could choose a better example, but that's okay. We'll see in a second. Uh, this blue line right here where the cursor is goes above the red upper control limit on March. The last time it happened was March 24th. You see how we have that date now on the left-hand side. So what do we want to do? We want to find the most recent status codes that are out of control. So we'll sort this whole thing, descending. I think I have to click it again after this. It's going to be ascending first. Um, yeah. Sort descending by the last time the upper control limit was violated by the exponentially weighted moving average. Now if we go to the top, what we'll see, and I'll put it back in presentation mode, is that the things at the top of this chart are where there were statistically significant increases in the frequency, daily frequency of these problems. So you'll notice this chart right here. We started to see an increase in no transaction. I'm not sure what that actually means in the context. Um, but starting on July 30th, this value started to increase. And that exponentially weighted moving average, this blue line, started to go above the red line. <coughs> so it's very easy now. We have a directed place to look. We can just look at the top of this dashboard or worksheet, and we get all of these signals, all these status codes that are going up faster than they were before. Um, so something like dispenser, I clicked by accident. Dispenser not operational, right? We've got, historically, there were tens per day. Right, so if we look at, you know, during May, 52 per day for this customer, and so on, and all of a sudden, on August 3rd, 2018, we had 314. But before that, on July 27th, we had 184, which is still t statistically more. And then we can see that the problem actually got worse, right? On the next day, it was worse, 184. Okay, went down a little bit, 132, 171. And all of a sudden, now we're at 314. We have a huge problem. And none of our bill validator modules are working for this customer, right? Or we could have detected it via this method two weeks before. Do you see how this helps us? The purple line basically is that like The purple line is just an one, one or negative. Yeah, one. exactly. And I, I, I gave it a numerical value so that it would be on the same plot. Also, you know, I won't go into that. But it's just an indicator that it was, it was above the red line. Yeah. Um, so this is incredibly useful for us because now there's some cascading failure, right? We're updating machines to Windows 10 and it causes part X in machine Y to go bad for customer Z. Well, if we're rolling out this update and we roll it out to 10 machines and then 20 machines and we detect that it's causing this problem, tomorrow we might decide not to roll it out to the next 1,000 machines and have 1,000 work orders to execute where we send an engineer on site 
right? So it's incredibly useful for us uh, in this context. I'll just pull up another customer so you can see you know, that this is a really good general solution um, to this problem. Let's see some other trends. Any questions? This is pretty much the end of what I had. I was going to show you another workbook where we actually uh, we apply the same methodology to a different problem. Um, so the problem was we don't know when the internet goes out at a particular branch. Um, so if we can detect the number of machines that are giving these events, so not just the events themselves, but a distinct serial number, distinct count of serial numbers uh, of these tickets coming through, we know when a branch in a particular location is having a network issue. Because <coughs> otherwise, you know, let's say their network is down, right? We would get no uh, problem with them. They would tell us, oh, we don't have any dispenser problems today. We had zero yesterday too, and it's all great, right? Well, no, you did have dispenser problems, but your internet was down, so you couldn't tell. Um, so it's useful for us to detect that as well. Um, so yeah, transport jam on eject, for example. It's been a pretty significant increase in the last couple weeks, but we would have known about it three weeks ago if we had a step. Right. So that's pretty much it. So, so you use that same technology. If their internet is down, then you, yeah, have, so you, pull you have zero where maybe it was 50 on average, and now you have zero for a few days, so then you're thinking there's something else causing it to be low. Right, so pink line here is number of machines reporting, and the chart on top is, is the same, a similar chart to the ones we were just looking at. Right, so all of a sudden this customer went from 707 reporting on this day to zero, and this gets flagged by the system because it's a significant change. This happens to be the lower control one, right? Things went out of control the other way. Um, but it, it's still you know, very valuable to check that. Um, All right, questions? Yeah. If you go back to your other view, yeah. um, so in the last one that you were just showing, uh, the third one down there, mm -hmm. a lot of data jumping around. Obviously there, you see the trend going up. That obviously stands out to you. One below it looks like you just kind of have a one-off that yeah. popped up for one day. Do you have another means that you look at this to say, hey, a one-off that's now happening once every quarter doesn't really matter to me, but when I see the bigger piece there, you know, comparing the three, third line and your fourth line? Yeah, so the production version of this workbook actually has a filter on a different fixed level of detail calculation, which is the max uh, over the customer and, and problem, uh, the max daily frequency. So you can choose a minimum max daily frequency. So what you'll say is, I only care about these status codes if at some point in time you had at least 50 per day, right? And that's a good way of filtering out the ones that are basically irrelevant. Yes, you're correct. If, if something was zero for the whole history and then it became one today, we wouldn't consider that a problem for the business, but this that would get flagged because it's a statistically significant increase. Yeah. Can you show the... Um the other workbook, you mentioned like changing the sorting order and decreasing. What did it look like before you changed the sorting order? I'm just curious. Uh, so I will, what I'll do, is it, can you just choose no sort? Yeah, clear sort. Uh, but I think it's... Oh, it's already changed. Okay. Yeah, what's going on here? Oh, no, it, it did just change. Okay, yeah, so... Right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, there's no element of recency here. So you'll see, you know, the purple line is still indicating where these network outages occur. Um, but there's no top to bottom sort by the most recent one, which is what was really valuable. If you remember from the very first slide, the business requirement, the requirement was not just to detect these things, but to detect them quickly and get them to the right people. Um, so now we will send this out with alerts to a particular um, to a particular account manager who is concerned with this data, but we know exactly who to send it to and when instantly is the point. Yeah. Yeah, so for, <laughs> that's a great question. So uh, it's very context dependent. The first work, work the first workbook that I showed you, uh, we did not. And the reason was because while there is some seasonality for things breaking in the machine, uh, it's less so than something like distinct machines reporting, where uh, you'll notice on the pink line here, there's a clear seasonality. Um, people don't go to the bank on Sundays, or the bank might be closed on Sundays, something along those lines. 
So in this particular instance, yeah, I did a calculation to account for the seasonality, um, which happens to be why uh, the, uh, the control chart here is centered at zero. Um, it's looking at the time derivative from the previous week. Um, so that's because we do the seasonality this week. Um, so yeah, it is difficult to account for seasonality sometimes with control charts, because unless you know what it is, uh, it's sort of an exact science. Um, but we use the context of the problem we're trying to solve uh, when we apply this. Yeah. Yeah. Is the customer code a one-to-one -one relationship with the machine? Or is the customer code is a one-to-one -one relationship with an account that we have. So, for example, Bank of America uses NCR machines, right? So Bank of America um, would be one of those customer codes. The data coming from all the machines. From many, yeah, from all the machines. And, and that's, a, that's also a business decision. Um, a lot of the network stuff is customer dependent, so that's why we chose specifically that cross-sectional analysis. In other situations, something other than customer might be going to uh, put in this case. Anything else? Thank you very much. Cool.